Hey gang, and welcome back. Just a reminder, you can now use the promo code MTGMUDSTA, all caps, at FlipSideGaming.com. You'll get 10% off orders over $10 and help with the channel at the same time. Hey gang, and welcome back. This week, I am thrilled to bring you the brand new Commander 2017 decks. Sean was kind enough to organize this game where the decks were unaltered and we got to play them straight out of the box. This week, I'm playing the Ur Dragon. Sean is playing Arbo, Roar of the World, Harry is playing Inala, Archmage Ritualist, and Matt is playing Edgar Markov. For openers, I keep a hand with Curse of Bounty, Deathbringer Regent, Dragon Speaker Shaman, Crucible of the Spirit Dragon, Mystic Monastery, Plains, and Savage Ment Maw. Sean keeps a hand with Path of Ancestry, Forest, Plains, Quasali Pride Mage, Hedron Archive, Curse of Vitality, and a card I unfortunately couldn't see. Harry's hand had two mountains, Is It Chemister, Island, Swamp, Bloodline Necromancer, and Vell of the Nightclad. Lastly, Matt keeps a hand with two mountains, Opal Palace, Orzov Basilica, Captivating Vampire, Dark Imposter, and Mathis Fiendseeker. Sean wins the die roll and starts us off. For the first turn of the game, Sean plays Path of Ancestry, which comes into play tapped, and passes turn. Matt plays Forsaken Sanctuary and passes as well. Harry plays an island and passes. I play Mystic Monastery and also pass. Sean plays a forest and casts Quasali Pride Mage with the Path to Ancestry, allowing him to scry one. Matt then plays a mountain and passes turn. Harry also plays a mountain and also passes turn. I play Crucible of Spirit Dragon and pay one to put a counter on it during my first main phase since I want to let everyone know that I'm not a threat. Sean plays a plains and casts Miri, Weatherlight Duelist, and once again gets to scry thanks to Path to Ancestry. Moving to combat, Sean puts the arrow bow trigger on the Quasali Pride Mage and swings at Matt. This triggers a Pride Mage's Exalted ability and Matt takes 6. Matt plays a mountain for his turn and casts Dark Imposter. This triggers Edgar Markov's Eminence ability and gives Matt a 1-1 Vampire token. For Harry's turn, he plays a Swamp and passes. For my turn, I play a Plains and once again tap to put a counter on Crucible during my main phase before passing to Sean. Sean plays Terramorphic Expanse and cracks it to grab a Forest and puts it into play tapped. Sean then casts Curse of Vitality on Harry and moves to combat. He puts the arrow trigger on Miri and swings again at Matt for 7 this time. Matt quickly chooses to jump with a vampire token and Sean moves to his second main phase before passing turn. Matt taps a mountain during his first main phase and drops Orzov Basilica, returning the tap mountain to his hand. With the one mana floating, Matt taps his other dual land to cast Go for the Throat on Sean's Miri. As if this weren't brutal enough, Matt also denies Harry props and moving to combat, I get introduced to Matt's Dark Imposter and take 2 damage. Harry plays a Mountain and passes to me. For my turn, I play a Swamp and put another counter on Crucible before passing to Sean. During Sean's first main phase, he pays 4 to cast Hedron Archive and then taps the Archive to cast and equip Skull Clamp onto his Pride Mage. In response to the equip, however, Harry terminates Sean's Pride Mage and with nothing else, Sean passes turn. Matt drops Opal Palace for his land for turn and then casts Captivating Vampire, who triggers Edgar Markov, giving him another token. Moving to combat, Dark Imposter shifts to my left and deals 3 damage to Sean. With nothing else, Matt passes turn. Harry plays a Mountain and paying 5, casts Havengul Lich before passing to me. For my turn, I play Jungle Shrine, which comes into play tapped, and, removing all the counters I've built up on the Crucible, plus tapping a few of my other lands, cast Savage Vent Maw. I excitedly realize that it actually costs one less, which totally justifies my commander choice, and I pass to Sean. Sean plays a Leonin Arbiter during his first main phase, and scries one to put the card on the bottom. Sean follows this up by casting Hammer of Nazan, which triggers when entering the battlefield and equips itself onto the Arbiter. With nothing else, Sean passes turn. Matt plays a Mountain and proceeds to rain on everyone's parade by casting Anuan the Ruin Sage and gets another Vampire token. He decides not to attack however and passes to Harry. Harry plays an Island for his turn and then casts Mirror of the Forebearers, naming wizards but not zombies or dragons strangely enough. With nothing else, he passes to me. For my turn, I also miss my land drop, so I cast Curse of the Bounty on Matt and move to combat. I swing the Vent Maw at Matt, which triggers the Curse and Vent Maw, allowing me to untap my dragon and I get 3 red mana and 3 green mana. Matt takes 4 and we move to my second main phase. Using some of my floating mana, I cast Dramoka the Eternal as fodder for the Anawan trigger and pass to Sean. Sean plays a Plains and casts Zendikar Resurgence, or moving to combat. He puts the Erebo trigger on Arbiter, as it's his only target, and swings at Matt. This triggers the curse and Sean gets to untap his Archive and Arbiter. Matt chumps with one of his tokens, and with nothing to do in his second main phase, Sean passes turn. On Matt's upkeep, we're all forced to sacrifice a non-vampire creature, and Dramoka, Havengul Lich, and Leonin Arbiter hit the bin.
In response to the end of Matt's upkeep, I put a counter on Crucible once more. During Matt's first main phase, he then casts Melchior Blood Witch, which while on the stack triggers Edgar Markov, giving Matt another token. The Blood Witch then hits the battlefield and drains us all for 6, gaining Matt 18. Moving to combat, Matt swings a token, Dark Imposter, and Anawan at Sean for 10. With nothing else, he passes to Harry. Harry rips Grix's panorama off the top and plays it. He then casts Vel the Nightclad and pays the 1 from Anala's Eminence trigger to get a token copy. The legendary rule kicks in, and Harry sacrifices a token which triggers both copies of Vela, dealing 2 damage to each of his opponents. With nothing else, Harry passes turn. For my turn, I get my game face on and move straight to combat, swinging the Vent Maw at Matt. The curse triggers and the dragon triggers, letting me untap my non-land permanents and giving me 3 green and 3 red mana once more. During my second main phase, using some of the free mana I just got, I cast Deathbringer Regent and wipe the field. With Vela dying, Harry's opponents once again take one more damage. I then cast Cultivate, putting an Isle under the battlefield and a mountain into my hand, which I then play. With nothing else, I pass to Sean. Sean plays a forest for his turn and casts Erebo, Roar of the World. Sean stacks his triggers to let him scry, then draw, and he draws the card from the top. We make a slight mistake at this point, and Sean equips the hammer onto Erebo for free, and pays one to equip the skull clamp. We do catch this, but not before Sean casts Oreskos Explorer, which lets him draw a card, and then find one planes, because I have more lands than he does. With nothing else, Sean then corrects his mistake, and passes to Matt. Having lost a lot of his momentum, Matt plays Blood Artist during his main phase, and gets another vampire token thanks to Edgar Markov. With nothing else, he has to pass to Harry. Harry plays a Swamp and casts Bloodline Necromancer, paying the one from Anala to create a token copy of it. He brings back Vela and the Havengul Lich thanks to the triggers, and moves to combat. Harry swings the token copy of the Necromancer at Sean, dealing 3 damage and gaining 3 life. Harry passes the turn and mistakenly forgets to remove the token, which we do catch eventually, but it would have triggered Vela at the end of his turn, dealing 1 damage to us which I'm going to mark down now. For my turn, I quickly count up my lands and, thanks to this count from the Ur Dragon, I am able to drop a tasty Udvara Hellkite. Moving to my combat step, Sean doesn't like the idea of being overrun with dragon tokens and kills the Hellkite with crushing vines before I can declare attackers. I then swing at Harry with my Deathbringer, gaining meaning 2 life and giving Sean 2 life as well, and with nothing else, I pass to Sean. During Sean's first main phase, he plays a planes and equips the hammer onto the explorer. Moving to combat, Sean puts the Erebo trigger on the explorer, making it a 7-5. It's around this point that I realize that Harry's token should have been exiled, which would have dealt the 1 damage as I mentioned before, and Sean decides to swing the cat at Harry, which triggers Erebo's second ability, and Sean happily pays for it, giving the Explorer plus 7 plus 7. Harry blocks with the Necromancer, preventing 2 of the damage and gaining 3 life, meaning he only takes 9 damage. With the Necromancer dying, we lose another life from Bella, and Sean gains 2 from the curse triggering due to the combat damage. During Sean's second main phase, Sean casts Soul's Majesty on the Explorer, drawing 14 cards, and moving to his end step, has to discard down to 7. For Matt's turn, he plays Stone Quarry Tapped, but has nothing to do and passes turn. During Harry's first main phase, he casts Puppeteer Click, paying the one from Anala's Eminence trigger to get a token copy. He steals my Udvara Hellkite and Savage Vent Maw, and moves to combat. During his combat step, Harry swings the Vent Maw, Hellkite, Vela, and Puppeteer Click token at Sean. The Udvara Hellkite triggers twice, giving Harry two Dragon tokens, and takes Sean out of commission. Moving to his second main phase, Harry casts Is It Chemister, and makes a copy of it with Anala. Harry then cracks the Grixis panorama to find a basic, and exiles Terminate with the Is It Chemister. At the end of Harry's turn, four creatures get exiled which triggers Vela four times, dealing four damage to Matt and myself. For my turn, I cast Soul Ring, and using Soul Ring in some of my lands, drop Colligan Storm's Fury and Dragon Speaker Shaman. I realize that I can't really afford to attack, and I pass to Matt. Matt plays Cinder Barons for his land, and casts Mathis, Fiend Seeker, during his first main phase. This gives him another vampire token from Edgar Markov, and moving to his end step, Matt puts the bounty counter from Mathis on Harry's puppeteer click. For Harry's turn, he plays Marchesa, the Black Rose, during his first main phase, and moves to combat. Harry swings the two dragon tokens and puppeteer click at Matt, as he is the highest life total, and the creatures each get plus one plus one counters. Matt is ready for this, however, and casts Teferi's Protection, essentially negating the attack. This does cause my Curse of Bounty to fall off Matt, but he gets to live for another turn. During Harry's second main phase, he uses Havengul Lich's ability, targeting the Dark Imposter, and casts the Vampire from Matt's graveyard. With nothing else, Harry passes to me. I top deck like a boss and can barely contain my excitement as I ask Harry if he has any remaining flyers. With Harry's sullen no, I resolve a Tarka, World Render, and move to my combat step.
I swing my Deathbringer and Coligan at Harry, which triggers Coligan twice, pumping my dragons by plus one plus zero twice, and giving them double strike thanks to Atarka. This is more than enough to take out Harry, and with nothing else, I pass to Matt. Matt sadly is not much action, but he does play at Orzov Guildgate and wants to go out with one last hurrah, so he casts Edgar Markov. Matt then moves to combat and swings everything at me, which triggers Edgar Markov's second ability, giving all his vampires a plus one plus one counter, and I take 13. This however doesn't kill me, and on my next turn, I move straight to combat, swinging all of my dragons and Matt, dealing more than enough damage to end the game. Game review time. Alright, so we got to play these decks straight out of the box with no changes, and I have to say they're pretty interesting. I know that in some other gameplays that are currently on YouTube, some of the decks underperform, and I was thankful that this game each deck got to really kind of be showcased. The Dragon deck is certainly interesting, and the Ur Dragon does offer a discount on all dragons, but unfortunately he can be very difficult to cast without having Fists of the Sun on the board to justify spending that much mana. The mana base was also an issue, and I was very thankful to have the Crucible so early on to help fix things early. Erebo Roar of the World was a very aggressive deck. The deck never really wants to go too wide and instead focuses on building up one creature, but when that one creature connects, it hurts. I think compared to the rest of the decks, straight out of the box, this one is probably the strongest of the four. Speaking of commanders that just sit in the command zone and offer tons of value, Edgar Markov must have given Matt a billion vampire tokens. He does force you to go heavily vampire tribal, but it does allow you to basically get two bodies for one casting cost. I could see this deck being really interesting with a lot of ways to protect it while casting spells to get a huge board and then casting Edgar Markov once and swinging with him to pump your entire board by plus one plus one and getting in for lethal. And last but not least, Anala, Archmage Ritualist, which is probably the card that people in the competitive scene are most excited about, certainly did a lot of work this game. Her eminence ability for only one colorless mana is incredibly powerful, and it was very easy for Harry to start abusing once he had some creatures with good enter the battlefield effects. I do think, however, that out of the four decks, the wizard deck lacks the most direction, as it's pulled in either a spell-heavy deck or an enter-the-battlefield deck. That being said, I think if you refine it to one direction or the other, it will be incredibly powerful. If I had to rate them, I think the cat deck would be the top deck, followed by vampires, dragons, and lastly wizards. Please be sure to tune in every Monday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video, with a second video popping up sometime during the week. You can also follow me on Twitter at mtgmudsta, or check me out on Twitch at twitch.tv slash mtgmudsta. This video is brought to you in part by support from my Patreons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below or in the About section. As always, thank you guys for watching, and please be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe for more.